Sultans and Sultanas of Circuit Python Sound, it's Prof G, and to paraphrase an old Broadway musical, we're gonna bring on the noise by learning to play wave files in Circuit Python. We'll download some useful files to leverage in the next few lessons. I'll show you how to programmatically set up audio on your board, and it's important to know that this could vary by board, so I'll point this out. We'll use help modules to find out the built-in modules that are available to our board. We'll create a little chunk of code that we can use to play WAV files. And we'll have a challenge where we can bring the noise button style. Let's learn to bang a gong with CircuitPython. And if you're new to the playlist, here's where you can catch up on the goodness that brought us all to this point. Code Slingers, before we begin, let's download a folder of sounds so that we can add that to our CircuitPy board so that we have some sounds to work with. Why don't you open a browser and head to this URL, bit.ly slash circuitpython dash school dash files, all lowercase. Find the folder named drum sounds, not 12 drum sounds. Right click on it, select download. This probably is going to download to your downloads folder on your computer. My browser is set up to ask me where to save. I'll save it to the desktop. Go to the file after it's been downloaded. If you need to double click to unzip it, make sure that you've done that. You should now have a file on your computer that's named Drum Sounds. And with your CircuitPython board plugged in, drag that folder into your CircuitPy volume. You should now be able to see drum sounds in your CircuitPy volume. If you expand that folder on that volume, you should see a bunch of WAV files with .wav in the end. Cool. Now I know some of you are hankering to want to load up your own files on your Circuit Playground, but a few things to know. First, you don't have a lot of space on a Circuit Playground board. The CPB only has about 2 megabytes of storage, and it has to share that with CircuitPython libraries and code. Now in a later lesson, when we work with the Raspberry Pi Pico, I'll show you how you can add an SD card to that board to give you gigabytes of additional storage for sounds. But in the beginning, storage will be limited. Also note that WAV files used in CircuitPython need to be in mono, not stereo, at a 22 kilohertz sample rate or smaller, and at 16 bits or smaller. Now those terms may not mean much to you, but you can download free Audacity software available for Macs and Windows, and here are the settings to accomplish everything I just mentioned. Set to mono, 22 kilohertz, and save at 16 bits. I've also got another video in the playlist that can take you through this step by step, but this is a good crib sheet. You don't need to worry about creating audio files for our lessons. I'll give you downloads for everything you need. Now let's get into PyCharm and learn how to write code to play the awesomeness. So from our earlier lessons, you're likely getting used to the fact that when you work with new hardware, you typically have to import new libraries. Well, audio is the same. These libraries are built into CircuitPython, so fortunately we're not going to have to import packages into our PyCharm project, nor do we have to install them in the LIB folder on our CircuitPy volume. They're already part of basic CircuitPython. Now, just about every board that can use audio is going to import the WAV file class from the Audio Core library. You do that like this from Audio Core, import WAV file, capital W, capital F. That's the standard naming convention for classes, and WAV file is a class. That's a blueprint for creating a CircuitPython usable WAV file imported from a file off of your board. But the next step is going to vary depending on the board that you use. If you're using a Circuit Playground Bluefruit like I am here, or a Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W like my students are using later in the semester, Semester, then you're going to import audio PWMIO using this line. Now because of hardware differences, some boards like the Circuit Playground Express don't use audio PWMIO. They use audio IO. So that board will use this line. Now if you know which board you're using, you can just use whichever single line statement is listed here. But if you're not sure, you can write this block of code. And this is what it does. It tries, hence this keyword, to import the audio out class from the audio IO library. Now we try recognizing that this might fail. It might throw an error. If we do get an error, we're assuming it's going to be something called an import error. And then this accept line will run. This catches the error so that it doesn't crash. And then we're going to try something else. We're going to try to import PWM audio out from the audio PWM IO library. Now there's one more trick on this line that we haven't seen before. The as audio out bit here at the end says, hey, I know you just imported something called PWM audio out, but we're going to rename it for use in this program as just audio out. Now what's useful about this line is that the classes PWM audio out and audio out are set up the same. They pass the same thing in between parentheses. So by naming them both the same thing, any code that we write afterward, regardless of which library we imported from, can refer to audio out. Now there are a small number of boards that don't support either audio library, so in planning projects, make sure you know what your board can do if you want to play audio. And here's a pro tip. You can get into the terminal, launch TO, and press any key to get into the REPL, and then you can 
can enter this command, help and in parens the string modules, and this will list all of the built-in libraries that are available to your board. I've copied the output from the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, Express, and Pico W here. You can see that the CPB and the Pico W both use audio PWMIO. The Express doesn't have that, it just has audio IO. And this is such a useful thing to do. Let's see this in action. Why don't you join me over in PyCharm. We'll open the terminal. We'll get into TO if you're not there already. You probably have some code that's running, so press Control C. Press any key to get into the REPL, and then enter help, in parentheses, the string modules, all lowercase. And when you press return, cool, look at all the stuff that we got in here. Now you can look up documentation on any of the stuff that you want. There's often an Adafruit Learn Guide mentioning certain libraries. We're going to cover some of the cooler ones in future classes. But you see on my board, which is a Circuit Playground Bluefruit, I've got audio PWMIO. I don't have audio IO. Now the code will write after the import is going to work on the Circuit Playground Express as well. But if you have an Express, you need to make sure that you import audio IO, not audio PWM IO, because if you repeated this on a Circuit Playground Express, you're not seeing audio PWM IO, but you are seeing audio IO. Now a few more things we need to know about. If you're using a Circuit Playground board, a Bluefruit or Express, you need these three lines of setup code. They set up the onboard speaker. So first you create a digital IO object, and this is just like the object that we created when setting up a button. But the location here is board.speaker underscore enable, not board.button A or board.button B. Then we set the direction this way, so this is completely different than buttons. We say speaker.direction, so speaker is what we just set up above, and set that equal to digital IO dot capital D direction dot in all caps output and then we set speaker.value equal to true. So finally, once you've imported your libraries and you've done any setup for a circuit playground, you're ready to create an audio out object. This is the software object that we'll use to actually play the WAV file, and it uses either of those two libraries that we talked about importing in the prior slide. Here we're going to pass in the location of the speaker. For the circuit playground, that's just going to be board.speaker in all caps. When we get to the Raspberry Pi Pico portion of the course, we're just going to swap out dot .speaker with dot .pin, whatever the pin location is that you're using to connect to the speaker. But the code below works regardless of board. We're going to first set a path variable and a file name variable, so our code knows where to find the sound that we want to play. Now, the path variable is just the folder on our CircuitPy board that contains our WAV files. For us, that's drum sounds. Remember, that's just one word, but with a capital S in the middle that starts sounds. And you always want to include the slash at the end of the path name. That's going to separate the folder from the file. Then we set up the file name for the file that we want to play. Here, we're just going to use drum underscore cowbell dot wave. And this chunk of code actually does the playing of the sound. Now, this open as statement that we see here is like saying wave underscore file, which is a variable, is equal to the contents of whatever file we're going to open on our board. That's our path name, drum sound, and the file name, drum cowbell dot wave. Now, the reason we write it this way instead of wave underscore file equals this open statement is because using with as will automatically close the file after it opens it. It's a programmatic thing that needs to be done. If we didn't use with as, then we'd have to write some more code. So wave underscore file at this point is going to have all the data that it read off of our CircuitPy board. Then we run it through the wave file class. This creates a wave file that CircuitPython can play back. We're just going to call that wave. And then we take wave and we run it through audio.play. That plays the file for us. Then afterward, we have while audio.playing, which means while the audio is playing, we say pass. And the reason why we do this is we don't want to do anything while we're playing our audio. If we did, there's a chance we might distort the sound in the playback. But in a later lesson, I'll show you how you can do things like animate lights while the sound is playing. But this is our code for now. Let's set it up and get that cowbell playing. And let's change the comment up top to read wave dash play. And let's delete some of the stuff that we don't need. We'll keep the colors in here, but why don't we get rid of, uh, why don't we get rid of everything below it? And we don't need to import debounce buttons anymore either. But regardless of which board we're using, we want to import wave file because that's what we need to play WAV file. That comes from the audio core library. So we'll say from audio core import WAV file, capital W, capital F, because it's a class. And for those of you using the Circuit Playground Bluefruit or the Raspberry Pi Pico boards, you can say from audio PWMIO import and if you capital P here, code completion shows you PWM audio out with the proper capitalization. As, capital A audio, capital O out. That as just renames PWM audio out as audio out in our code use below. But if you're using the Circuit Playground expression, comment out that line with a hashtag and write from audio IO, no PWM in this one. And it doesn't show up in code completion here because when I did the Circuit Python set board command for my Circuit Playground Bluefruit, PyCharm knows that audio IO is not available on that board. Then add import. 
Capital A audio, capital O out one word. Now I could uncomment this line above, but actually I don't want either of these lines, but I'm gonna delete this line and I'm gonna use try accepts that you can use in any code that would import the correct audio library that you need regardless of the board. And by the way, if you ever click in the gutter over here, you'd get a red circle. I did that by accident when I was clicking around too fast. You can just click on that to get rid of it. That's for interactive debugging in PyCharm where you can pause your code when it executes, but that doesn't work with external boards. So I'll first say try colon it indents and I'll say from audio IO import capital A audio capital O out. Some boards like the Circuit Playground Express use this import statement from audio IO, but if it doesn't work, return and outdented the word accept and then the exception or the error that we're expecting is something called the import error. That's one word with a capital I capital E colon here again. And then below we'll enter another try accept statement. Again, this tries something out and if it has an error, it won't crash the program. It'll just run whatever's in the accept. So here we're gonna say try colon indented from audio PWMIO import PWM audio out as audio out with the capitalizations as shown. Then out then accept space import error capital I capital E colon return indented. And here, instead of putting in a pass, I'm going to put in a print statement that says this board does not support audio, or at least the onboard audio that we're trying to set up here. So if you ever ran this chunk of code on a board that we didn't talk about and it didn't have any onboard audio on it, it would let you know. So this block of code should work on any board, but it's not too tough to do the help messages that we showed before and identify if you want to import your audio IO, your audio PWM IO. You can write just that one line instead of these seven lines. It's entirely up to you. And now why don't we set up our audio down below and this next chunk of three lines is what we need to do for audio setup for circuit playground boards if you intend to use the internal speaker. You don't want these three lines on any board that's not a circuit playground Bluefruit or circuit playground express. Those other boards don't support the statement and they throw an error. So the first thing is you set up your speaker as a digital I.O. device, just like a button is. Speaker digital I.O. dot capital D digital in out. This is a class. We open parentheses here and in the class factory, we're going to pass in the location of the digital I.O. device. Remember, we passed in board dot button A or button B previously. Well, here we say board dot speaker underscore enable in all caps. That's the location of the speaker on circuit playground boards. Now, this next line is a little different from buttons, which were input devices. We're going to set up a digital output device. And we're going to say speaker dot direction equals digital IO dot direction capital D dot output all in caps. And one last thing to turn on that speaker so it can be used, we say speaker dot value equals capital T true. Also, as I mentioned, you can skip this if using an external speaker. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Now let's create our audio out object. This is the thing that actually does the playing of the WAV file. We'll call that audio. We'll set it equal to audio out, capital A, capital O. Again, this is a class, and in between parentheses, we're going to pass in board dot and an all caps speaker. That's different from speaker underscore enable we used up here, but this tells audio out where to find the speaker. If you're on a board with pins like Raspberry Pi Pico, you'd say board dot and then list the pin. We'll cover that when we cover the Pico. So again, this uses a speaker location to create an audio out object named audio. Sorry, I didn't spell create correctly. Then we want to set up the path and file names. You could put this in your code as literals, but it's good to use variables here and we'll change these later on. So we'll say path equals an in between double quotes drum sounds slash. Notice how the S is capitalized. If we go over to our circuit pi board, we can see we've got a folder with this name. Also in here, we see the file name that we want to play, which is drum underscore cowbell dot wave. So on the next line, we'll say file name equals the string drum underscore cowbell dot wave. Make sure you've got the capitalization that matches the name of the file. Also, don't forget the slash at the end of the path name string. That's going to separate the folder from the file name. Now we'll write the block of code that actually plays that wave file. So we'll say with open and in parentheses, we'll pass in path plus file name. So we're going to open the file comma in quotes RB. That stands for read binary. We're going to read the raw data off of the circuit pi volume. Always keep the RB in there. Then we'll say as wave underscore file colon. And this creates a variable wave underscore file with data from the file we're reading in. Now that data isn't quite a playable wave file. So we're going to create that below. We'll say lowercase wave equals and then the object wave file capital W capital F. We're going to send it to the wave file factory and in parentheses, we're going to put in wave underscore file, the raw data that we read above. After this is done, we've converted that data to a playable wave file called wave. Then we use our audio object audio to dot play in parentheses, the wave. You'll hear the sound and to make sure nothing interrupts it on the next line, we'll say while audio dot playing colon. This loop will continue as long as sound is playing and we'll just put a pass below here that waits till the audio is done. 
Then open the terminal, and with PyCharm running, we'll command S to save, or control S. And you heard very faintly, that was the sound of the cowbell. If you want to hear it again, you just got to press space bar, do something up here so that we can save again with command S. I'm showing video of the CPB. It doesn't do anything. It's all sound. There it goes. It takes a while, and uh, you can do it one more time if you want to hear it. So, all right, that sounds kind of okay. I'll post a short lesson after this so you can see how you can clip a standard speaker to this to make it sound louder. But let's save this to our Circuit Playground School folder. And always remember to close the extra tab this creates so you're back at code.py. So, Code Monsters, now that you have your code playing audio, how about a challenge? We'll call this the More Cowbell Challenge. After one of the greatest SNL skits of all time, you'll set up the two built-in buttons on a circuit playground. You can use the base button code, no need to debounce here. And when button A is pressed, Bruce Dickerson will be thrilled because he's got to have more cowbell. And for extra measure, when button B is pressed, play the scratch.wave sound so you can get your Spinderella on. For those of you who need some hip-hop schooling, she was the original DJ for Salt and Pepper. Ladies and gentlemen, salt and pepper! You should be able to dominate this challenge, pause, bring the noise, and when you're ready to resume, let's compare answers. Let's change the comment up here to wave button, W-A-V dash buttons. And when you work with buttons, you got to import digital I.O., but we've already done that. And let's enter some button setup code. I'm going to slink down here and do it just above where I do my audio setup for the Circuit Playground boards. So we'll set up button A as a standard button for the Circuit Playground board. Button underscore A equals digital I.O. dot digital in out, passing in between parentheses, board dot button underscore A. Then we take that object we just created and set it up so that it's a digital input object. Button underscore A dot switch to input, passing in digital IO dot pull dot down. Make sure you got all your capitals right here. And if things are looking good, copy these two lines, paste them down below, and change the three occurrences of the letter A as in button A to B as in button B. Then when we work with buttons, we want to constantly check to see if they have been pressed. That implies an infinite loop. So let's enter some while true colon action down below. And we'll check for button A's press with if button underscore A dot value colon. And I didn't ask you to do this, but one of the things that I like to do when I'm working with button code, just to make sure it's working okay in case there's a problem with, say, the sound or something, is I like to put a print statement in here. I'm just going to say print and in parens the string A pressed. Then I'm going to highlight all of this code to play a wave file, cut it out. I'm going to get rid of the comment up here too. And I'll paste it below button A's if statement. Always make sure you've got your indents proper. Python is very specific about what it will accept for indentation. And I'm going to put a string literal in here instead of the variable file name. And that string literal is going to be drum-cowbell.wav. And we'll save us a little bit of coding time by copying the whole if statement here with all of its actions below. Then on the line below this, we'll outdent so that it's even with the first if statement. Paste it in, but change the if condition to refer to button underscore B this time. Print out B pressed. And the only other thing to change in here is the name of the file we want to play. Here we want it to be scratch.wav. Now let's open the terminal, make sure that you're in TO, and save this so we can rock those buttons. Here we go. And oh, button A, and button B, press those buttons, you're sounding good. So hopefully you got that challenge. Let's save that to our CircuitPython school folder as WAV-buttons. And as we save, let me point out, we've got two blocks of code here that look nearly identical, except for the print statements and the name of the file that we're playing. Well, in this lesson, you learned how to bring on to noise. In the next lesson, we're going to learn to bring on to funk into form of Python functions. After you save, close the extra tab so you're back at code.py. So, mellifluous ones, you once again had big learning. You learned to load audio libraries on different kinds of boards. You used the try except to catch and handle errors that would otherwise crash code. You used the help modules repl command to identify modules available on a board. You coded the setup for the internal circuit playground speaker, wrote code to play WAV files, and conquered the more cowbell challenge. Python needs to be loud and proud. There's more big learning to come. Keep hacking.